So hey friends, welcome to this week's video. This week we are going to go over a comparison between the Insta360 Link and the OBSBOT Tiny 4K. These two webcams have done full reviews on, so definitely check out my channel if you want to see those individually. However, I did have a viewer that wanted to see the comparison because she teaches yoga and she wants to see which one will attract her better. This is obviously a great excuse to do a full down comparison. So that's what we'll start with. So let's start off with the specifications, just what we see, you know, plain eyes view on the specs and see how these compare. And then we'll go into other things like image quality, mic quality and tracking capabilities. From a specifications perspective, they're very similar. Both cameras will give you the specs you need to get a quality image of the camera and make yourself look good on a webcam. However, there are certain areas that one excels over the other and vice versa. So with the tiny 4K, you're gonna get a larger field of view as well as HDR and 4K, so better color science potentially, as well as just more space to you know, look less claustrophobic and also allow for any crops that you might want to do. However, for the link, you're going to get a larger sensor and a larger aperture. So you're going to get better light in coming into that sensor. So you might get better color science as well as perform better in darker scenarios. Other places that this sort of has differentiation is mostly around the mounting. So like the tiny 4K has a magnetic mount, so it's not as stable, but it does provide a little bit more flexibility in terms of rotation. Um, but it also, you know, has the, the four and a one fourth screw on the bottom. So if you want to put it on a stand, you can. It's very similar with the link. It also has that. However, their stand is built in. So it's a little bit better for transporting as well as a little bit more stable because it is all one piece. Other things that you'll see that are different are going to come down to like shooting modes, which we'll get into later, as well as just the accessories that come with it. So the OBSBOT is a little bit nicer for the carry around because it does come with a hard shell case as well as the or sorry on side of the tiny 4k which has other accoutrement like whiteboard stickers for different shooting modes so those are kind of things that you need to consider the only other thing that i've really noticed having these guys in hand is that the insta360 seems a little bit more frail i mean they're made of the same stuff it's just because of how this was built and the axis that it's on it just doesn't feel as you know solid while the OBSBOT is very, very solid. I don't have any issues like bringing this around. It just feels a little bit more weighty. And as a result, that might be how it affects how this thing tracks as well in terms of its smoothness. But we'll get into that on the shooting front. But as I mentioned, a lot of these things are very, very similar. So the only way that I'm gonna be able to show you guys the subtle differences, or maybe they're bigger, who knows? The, the differences between these cameras is to show you live samples. So let's get into video first and see how they perform. Okay, so let's start with the tiny 4K, but before we do that, let's get some level set going. I will not be changing the colors on this guy, so no white balance or color changes. Everything will be set to auto just to show you guys out of the box colors and not really finagle with too much. You get a better side-by-side -side comparison of how these guys deal with colors and lighting. In terms of sound, I'm gonna be using the onboard microphones. I will not be using my standard mics that I normally do so you guys can hear how these microphones sound to your audience. And then finally, I'm about arm's length away. Um, that's just gonna give me a little bit of gauge so that we have very realistic expectations of how uh, the field of view is and how they differ. Another thing is obviously I've gone a lot more in depth in a lot of these different features in the applications from zoom modes, colors and all that sort of stuff. Um, so I definitely encourage you guys to check out my full reviews of each of these cameras because I do go in depth into the apps a little bit more. So tiny 4K. First thing you notice is that these colors are pretty accurate when we're looking around. A little bit warm, but my skin, the shirt, that jacket, they're all pretty accurately colored. And I do like that, that I don't have to modify it all that much. When I did come on camera, you did notice that there were some exposure changes. So it does take a little bit of time. So if I do it again, You'll see that I'm extremely bright, but over time, it will come back and compensate to a more accurate exposure. So I do like that it does that. It's a little bit slow, but you know, not too much of a gripe. Now, in terms of the field of view, that's the big thing that I love about the Ozbot is that there's so much space. I can emote with my hands and I can talk normally without me worrying about getting chopped off. That's something that I do miss with the link. I will admit that. Um, but the field of view is obviously really nice to show your background just to give you a little bit more space feel less claustrophobic like you're right there in the camera so 
I do like that. But there's also some presets. So if you do want something a little bit more intimate or you want some like emphasis on your face, there's a standard 78, which is closer to like what most webcams are. And then there's a 65. So some pretty easy uh, presets that'll get you closer into the camera, a little bit more intimate setting, but you can always go more. So you can go, this is 1.45 at 65 uh, degrees, but I can go 4X, get full zoom. And if I wanted to do this for my bed, this image doesn't look too bad either. The auto zoom does a tremendous job about finding a face. And we will talk about that in a bit. So now that we're back and compensated, um, let's talk about HDR. So HDR does bring some color. You'll see that it actually lightens me out a little bit. There have been some complaints that people don't like the HDR in the office lot. They prefer the regular, but it does have this option here at 4K, which is not the same with the link. So this one is 4K HDR, and I'm going to turn it on right now. I'm going to wait for it to readjust. And see, it does take out some warmth from my face. There's some features that get a little bit smoothened. So some people might like that look. I personally like the non-HDR look, but it is available to you if you want. Some other things that will be impacting your image is going to be focus. So this is autofocus and this is autofocus on my face. So if I move around and things like that, it'll look for my face and try to focus it on this as much as possible. From what I can tell is most of the definition is there. There's a little bit of softness in my eyes. And if you want to really lock that in and you're not moving around too much, you can definitely take that off of the auto and do some manual settings. So like, Again, like I can get super blurry and then scale it back until it's a little bit sharper than I want, than what? Sharper than what it was on auto. So it'd be like that. Pretty similar setting. That's the thing is a little bit sharper when I was able to tune it in by myself, but they do a pretty good job on auto mode um, on the face. But you can also do a global mode, so it'll keep everything in focus. Um, I don't see much difference um, because I'm not moving around much, but if maybe if you're doing something a little bit more active, that would be beneficial to do the more global setting, so it's not focused so much on your face. Um, other things than that, um, you can auto exposure on your face or global again similarly. Um, that might help you with the compensation issues. Um, but other than that, that's kind of what the image is out of the box. The other only other thing I can say is like right now we are in standard mode and it hasn't been moving around because I want to show this demonstration. So if I were to go to headroom mode and tap unlock, it's going to slightly move up. And that will be good if you emote with your hands and you move you know, around a little bit more or if you, know, you find yourself moving closer and further back, it can compensate and give you that headroom that you might want for the image that you're trying to shoot. So if you wanted to just have a little bit more headroom, you can definitely activate that, but tracking has to be on for that to function. So overall, let me know what you think of this image as well as the audio quality because we've been using this webcam for the past few minutes. Let's switch over to the link and see how it compares. So let's talk about the Insta360 link. From the get-go, you'll notice that the exposure sets a lot faster than what we saw with the Obsbot Tiny 4K. And that's really nice. Again, if you're moving around a lot, it'll compensate accordingly. However, because of this larger sensor and the bigger aperture, it just causes a lot more light to come in. So these are the same lights that I used in the previous shot, but I'm going to need to bring those down a couple levels to give myself a little bit more dynamic look that I had in the tiny 4k. That's not a knock on the link. It's just something to think, think about when you're doing this, you can probably be in a darker setting without less lights, which is nice. The thing that I will say about the color science is it's both good and bad. <laughs> so like in terms of this overall look, the Obsbot seemed to like tone down the purples and make everything a little bit more even compensates for the discoloration of my lights and makes things still look brown when they're brown. But overall accuracy, it's not there. It's actually overcompensating and not showing the purples, especially if I want this look. If I want this isolated look of everything looking purple and me being here, I'm not getting that with the tiny 4K. However, I am getting it with the link. The thing that I will say that's annoying with the color science here is that my skin is all off. This is yellow and not as brown as it was in the tiny 4K, which I think was a little bit more accurate to my personal skin tone. 
So it's a give and take there, a little bit annoying, but uh, again, you can change that in the application to get a little bit more accuracy out of it. The field of view is still pretty nice, but I do miss having some extra space there as well as being able to see my table. I thought it just gave it a little bit more dynamic shot and a little bit less flatness to it. Not a big knock if you're just using this for conferencing, but if you're using this for streaming or something a little bit more creative, um, having that extra field of view just nice for flexibility. Like the Tiny 4K, you can change the zoom, but they don't have the presets. The way that they do this differently is they allows you to set your own presets so you can use the slider and you can move the gimbal around using the application and you can set a position and then you can always have those positions in lock and it will readjust accordingly when you click them. They just don't have the predetermined presets like in the 4K. And again, just like the 4K, if I go back here and do full zoom, it looks pretty good. Um, it stays sharp and everything looks nice. If I move all the way back here, it even looks good back here. So if I want to step back, and do a full zoom, all that sort of stuff. That zoom is really nice. We'll get into that a little bit more in the tracking when you do the different modes um, and what they're tracking. That zoom actually plays a good part into keeping you in frame and you um, getting the shot that you would like because you are able to zoom with that sharpness. If we're talking about sharpness, I will say that this image here looks sharper than it is on the 4K. The 4K had a little bit of softness in my eyes. That that softness does not seem to be the same issue here. Um, so that's something that you need to keep in mind depending on what you're looking for. Um, if you want better colors, if you want better sharpness, this will definitely give you that crispy, crispy look that you might want. I definitely like it. It's just the color science is just a little bit off for me, but there's plenty more to talk about in terms of the applications, but I really can't go into them in terms of like headroom and things like that without talking about tracking. And that's gonna next, next part of our review is the tracking. So let's go to that from there. But before we do, I do wanna mention, this just sounds a lot better. I know you guys can hear it, but this, us, me talking to you right now on this microphone is just doing a tremendously better job of sounding like me, projecting, being able to hear me from across the room. I don't know what it is about Tiny 4K, but it's just a quieter microphone and it's overcompensating for something. Link does it a lot better in terms of how you sound. But again, let's go into tracking and talk more about the image. Okay, to start off this comparison, let's go with the Insta360 Link first. This is what I want to say about this before we start. I will be using just standard colors and the microphone that's inside the webcam just to keep things out of the box and there's no filters any crazy like color correction to sway you one way or the other. Um, the other thing that you'll need to know here is they have slightly different mechanisms in terms of keeping you trapped. The This one in particular just has speeds and I will be on the fastest one because I will be moving around a lot and I want this thing to keep up with me. When you're on slower speeds, it's great if you're at the desk. But if you're finding yourself moving around, it won't be able to track you fast enough and you likely will fall out of frame. That's the reason why the speed here is important. On the other mechanism here that, that 4K does not have is that this has AI zoom. And I have that enabled because it does help you keep in frame as well as the fact that it's just a unique feature that I want to show you what, where the power is on that. However, whether you turn this on or turn this off, it's mostly just for an aesthetic. It does not affect the tracking capability or how it responds. So I won't be doing this twice, but I did some testing before I shot this and it reacts basically the same regardless of if this is on or not. So let's activate tracking, relatively easy. And that's when you see the AI tracking kind of happening. So this is when the zoom came in. It's on head mode right now. So it's really just focused on my shoulders and up and that's, Really nice. So if I stand up, should track my head. See, not much headroom. We'll get into that a little bit, but overall should be able to track me relatively well. The problem with this being so zoomed in is sometimes you can get out of frame. It's doing a lot better than I would expect it to do, but, oh, it is doing way better today. Good job. But this is the reason why it can get a little bit off. You probably won't be doing crazy stuff like this in head mode, but you do have to reestablish it by finding it again. So let's move over to half body mode. And this one works well because it's again, half of your body. <laughs> so it should be able to track a little bit better just because there's a lot more for you to, it's harder for you to fall out of frame. But the AI zoom does do its job. 
in terms of finding you. And if you find yourself coming back and forward, half body mode is great because you never fall out of focus and it doesn't struggle to find you as bad. But again, same thing, I can shoot it. This is where I'm starting to think that this is really face focused rather than body focused. However, there's a last mode and that last mode is whole body mode. This is where I would hope that it would track the entire thing. See, doing well done. You will notice that it's a little jerky in this mode. Because it's trying to move really fast and react to it, it is just like, duh, 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 duh. it tries to find you as fast as possible. But if you, again, if you go any slower, you fall out of frame and you lose where you are. So again, this one is doing a little bit better, but because of the jerky motion, it gets lost a lot. Hey, I'm over here. Um, so the thing that I would recommend is like, don't do too much side to side because it's not the up and down gimbal that messes up. It's really just the, 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 the pan, the pan is just not fast enough to keep up with certain things. So that's something that you should be cognizant of. But as you mentioned, you're probably not going to be doing agility drills with this thing. So let's do something like basic, like just some basic yoga movements. This is where I wish my mom was here because she'd be able to advise me what to do more, but you know, let's just do basic down dog. Up dog, uh, okay, uh, <laughs> step into warrior. And right now it's you, oh, geez. You got lost off of that? I was not expecting you to get lost off of that, bro. Hi. Okay, so you struggled with that a bit. You still have me? Okay, it's, so this is where my, it's really focused on the face, despite saying whole body, it's super focused on the face. So again, like here's a good example, like that might've been a fluke or whatever, but like if I turn my back and I like move sideways and come back, it's not tracking me anymore, is it? No, see, because it really needs that face. It's not looking at the body. See, I turn it this way, it knows because I'm looking at it. It sees my face. So it's smart enough to recognize the face. It's just not smart enough to track your body. So if you are trying to do some yoga movements, you find yourself looking at the back, your face is hidden because it's under a leg, you might have some issues with this camera. It's not necessarily the smoothest pan tilt zoom and it's also not the most reactive or cinematic. However, the image is extremely good. Um, the sharp, it's probably gonna be sharper than the 4K, but as we speak about it, let's go over to the Obsbot Tiny 4K and see how that performs. All right, so now let's look at the Tiny 4K. And this guy obviously has a much wider field of view. That just gives you a lot more flexibility as we've mentioned plenty of times, but especially for emotion, if you're trying to track the room and you're doing something in it, love it because you don't have to worry about crouching down and all these other things. You might be wondering why I'm crouching down. It's because again, I've deactivated tracking so I can do it live with you just to show you how easy it is. There, so now, I rise, it'll rise with me. What you'll notice is that the movement is a little bit more smooth. So it does a little bit of slow follow because I am on standard mode. Again, there's other options here. This does not go down to speed like the Insta360 does. This comes down to sort of action. So this will bring it in. I do like how this moves a little bit better. It's just a little bit more natural. And it doesn't seem like I'm throwing you through a roller coaster like I was with the Insta360. So now if I did headroom, see, again, it brings it up. Not too bad. Again, if you want a little bit more space, it'll give you that. Again, I'm getting chopped off a little bit more than, or a little bit less than the Insta360, but obviously my feet are gone. But for the purposes of this, again, we will do motion where this will be a wider crop and it'll track me a little bit better. So this will get my entire body. So it will follow me as I need, things like that. And I really can't juke it out because it's really gonna follow me, like really wherever I go. Even if I went into standard mode, where it's the most crop, I believe it'll still track me pretty well. So let's go to standard. And yeah. So it doesn't have the same sort of AI zoom for sure. However, it does track me and it will follow me. It doesn't get lost, it'll find me. So this one's a little bit better on tracking. So let's go back to motion mode, which is what the purpose of this is and then let's just do random stuff that will kind of take my face off it to see if it actually tracks my body over my face so like i don't know like random stuff 
Still track meet, right? I think. Yep, still track meet. So again, yoga stuff. If you're doing it from the side. Up, down, down, down. Blah, blah, blah. Step through. Warrior's pose. I don't know. I'm not flexible anymore. But yeah, all this sort of stuff. It tracks my body more. It tracks it more. So overall, very, very good with the tracking. In terms of the image quality, you guys can tell me what you think about in the comments, but to me, this performs a lot better on the motion tracking pan tail zoom function than it does with the Insta360. Now that you guys have seen everything, let's go into our final thoughts. So all in all, both cameras do really, really well. They are both nice cameras. You really can't go wrong, and it's really hard for me to pick sometimes depending on which one I like. However, if you are trying to make a decision here, it really comes down to your use case. If you want a wider field of view, better skin tones, and also better tracking, I would say that the tiny 4K OBSBOT is probably better because it's just smoother operation. It can track you a lot better. It's a little bit more stable in its how it shoots. And that wide field of view just is really pleasant. It gives you a nice view like non-claustrophobic look to how you're doing. So if you're at a desk, you can see a lot more, you can be closer to it. There's just a lot of flexibility that I really like from a, like a cinematography perspective to give your audience a nicer view. However, if you really wanna prioritize, let's say like audio, like if you're gonna use like the in audio from the, the actual camera, as well as you want a little bit more sharper and a little bit more brighter look, then the Insta360 link is gonna be better. The larger sensor brings in a lot more light uh, you can be in a darker setting but still be properly exposed um, and all those sort of things my biggest qualms are that sometimes skin tones don't get rendered well and the tracking is wonky i'm hoping they can fix that in some firmware updates but it's just not able to move as fast or move as smooth as tiny 4k so when i'm personally using it because i have this microphone and because i just like the way that larger field of view is I kind of wish I still had that tiny 4K. I gave that to Samika and I kind of regret it. However, I'm still very happy with the Insta360 link because of how sharp it is. It's a good secondary view for my reviews or even within a stream. And I don't have to worry about being sharp. I don't have to be in, worry about being in focus because they have that down. I'm not moving a ton for these shots, so I'm not I'm terribly worried. But also because of the fact that if I am traveling, I can bring that guy Obviously there's no case, but I could bring it carefully, but still use the microphones and it'll be better than what I have on my laptop. So it really just depends on where you are. Picture wise, I think 4K, but everything else in terms of overall package is the, the Insta360. So tell me what you guys think you like the best, or if you have any questions about them, definitely open to answer anything you have in the comments. But to my viewer that was looking for that, I hope I answered your question. You kind of know where, which way you want to take your purchasing decision. But as always, definitely leave some recommendations or some things that you guys are wondering about tech. I love taking viewer requests because it makes it a lot more targeted. I'm not so scatterbrained. And because I have all these thoughts about technology and stuff like that, I kind of do that. So that's why some of my videos are longer. But with this one, very nice that I could just focus in on someone's need. So. Anyway, as always, I appreciate you guys. Please consider liking, subscribing, commenting, doing all the things that you normally do on a video that you like and love, and I will see you shortly. As always, peace.